Good morning. How are we doing today? How are you? <clears throat> it's Tuesday, everybody. It's the last day of January, January 31st, 2023. The final day of January. I can't believe it already. It's just, just unbelievable. Uh, wow. Just, just insane. Uh, hope it's a good day for you. Uh, I have a friend of mine out there who watches me religiously and it's a big day for him today. And I am thinking of him all day. Um, I'm so excited. Uh, everybody, welcome to the uh, to the show. I'm glad you're here. Uh, Auntie Jen says hello to all of you. Uh, she's doing great. Uh, all is well here. Uh, we went to the um, hospital yesterday to give get her uh, uh, get her the, the one more look from the surgeon to make sure everything is fine. And surgeon is just giving her the big thumbs up. She's doing great. Took another X-ray the post-op x-ray and all is well. And uh, she's been given the green light to just start living a normal life again. She's still got physio for another few, four, three, four more weeks, but uh, she looks forward to this and uh, she's building her strength and her flexibility. So uh, thank you for all of you, for all your kind thoughts on Jennifer. She's doing great and she says, hi. Um, uh, so we're really pleased about this. Um, what's going to happen to market day? There's the question for you. Uh, you'd have asked me half an hour ago. I would have said, "Oh, the Dow's off 100 points." Uh, you know, we got a, we got a negative day here. Uh, we're down 49 now. Um, yeah, we're down, but just 49. Um, watching uh, watching some stocks improve a little bit. I see the Nasdaq still off a quarter of a point. Uh, S and P's off a point one tenth of a percentage point and the Dow's off 15 one hundredths of a percentage point. So it's a nothing burger over there. there so far, nothing serious going on. We could actually open green this morning because we had a down day yesterday. So it could be a little pop. Uh, oil, crude oil down 51 cents right now at 77.39. Um, there's a lot of interest now to see what's going to happen in the uh, the Fed, uh, the Fed meets today and tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, we find out what the interest rates are going to be doing from the U.S. Federal Reserve. That is going to dominate this market starting later today uh, and all day tomorrow. Uh, Thursday night, Apple releases their results. That's another biggie. Among many other industry leaders, this is a big week for earnings. But Apple is uh, is is expected to release their numbers after the close Thursday night, day after tomorrow. We'll be watching that. Um, there's uh, there's a lot of speculation going on right now about just what's this market going to do compared to Europe? What about the economy for America compared to Europe? Uh, the American dollar, unemployment rate, da 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 da, da all this stuff. And um, we're getting uh, uh, just a ton of news. And to keep it in plain English for you, um, the expectations for the U.S. economy, while positive, not like disastrous, not going to be incredibly great. So soft landing, uh, slowdown, we are hearing about it, seeing it. The layoffs have come around, but unemployment is still not an issue. Uh, full employment is the expression that analysts are using for the U.S. economy. Everyone who wants a job can get a job. There are outfits in the U.S. who are desperate for workers, can't get them. They can't accept, uh, they can't accept kids right out of high school without any kind of education. They, they can't accept, um, uh, 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 in some cases, they can't hire anyone with a criminal record, which is you know, a real problem in America, considering how many people have a criminal record, uh, rightly or wrongly or fairly or unfairly, whatever. Um, education scenarios, training scenarios. There are there is a, a segment of, of American companies out there who are sort of employing from about uh, 20 to 100 people, that kind of range, and there are gazillions of these companies that can't find qualified staff to work because they don't need a janitor. They don't need that. They don't need a brain surgeon. They don't need that. Uh, they need uh, machinists. They need um, industrial type, light industrial type workers with skills that can operate a lathe, that can uh, work in fine tolerances, um, that have uh, uh, you know some education. And um, 
the problem in 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 uh, the world in which we live here and and the way it's been evolving is um there seems to be a problem with regards to the the uh, educating and 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 bringing into the workforce uh, people of a certain age with certain skills and all parents want the best for their children and um you know back in the in the 30s and 40s all moms wanted you to become a doctor or a lawyer and become really successful because those were successful people in their minds um in the uh, in the current world in which we live uh, parents look at their kids and go boy boy if you could be a, a software writer man you could really do well uh, get into it um but not all of us are cut out for that um and this area of let's call it a, the trades T-R-A-T-E-D, uh, trades, trades. In the area of trades, there is a gap. We, we have this, this um, it seems that we have this, uh, this um, uh, feeling that if you become a plumber or an electrician or, or, or a hands-on person, you're not successful. That successful people wear suits and ties, go to Wall Street and make gazillions of dollars. And, and the young, are are seeing the movies and tv shows and all this other stuff and they go th those are successful people though the the their idols when when teenagers when kids are teenagers who are their idols and who are their successful role models and it's um pop stars same when i was a kid pop star um but it's pop stars with private jets um, I remember when the Beatles were the greatest band in the world and they flew commercial. <laughs> they didn't have a private jet. The Beatles never had a private jet. Now, had they had a private jet uh, by the by the time they were in their in, in the late 60s uh, and they were they were being told by their management, you know, you guys can just take private jets to go, to go where you want to go. Uh, we could do a concert tour, you know, Barcelona for a night and uh, Paris for a night and and. Um, you know vienna for an we'll just fly you to these places and you can just do your concerts and then could fly out you don't have to stay in those cities and be just bombarded with screaming fans we can get you out of there maybe they'd still be together they'd have done you know reunion tours but in any event um kids today look at their heroes the kardashians those are the role models for a lot of american kids the kardashians what do the kardashians do do they sing and dance and act and and no? Do they entertain? Well, no. Um, they appear. They 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 appear wearing your outfit or holding a purse that you're pushing or a bracelet or a watch or earrings or jewelry and they appear. They get appearance fees. Young kids today look at that. And go there's that's success. They're traveling in. Um, in bulletproof SUVs, they're getting private jet service, bodyguards all around them, and they get appearance fees. Social, they're just they're just they're just popular, and that's that's the name of the game. Tradespeople can't find electricians, plumbers, uh, um, 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 air conditioning specialists, um, uh, um, systems uh, analysts. I mean, all of these fields are are lacking because there is no sexiness to the career. And America is paying a dear price for this because a lot of this work is being done offshore where countries have a trade type program. They have the education system from high school through college into trades. Um, but in America, the problem is that the trades people out there are perceived to be union people. They're perceived to be union workers. And in America, a unionized worker in certain parts of this country are the enemy. That's those are socialists. Uh, they they they're they're part of a union. We can't have that. Look at Amazon fighting unions every step of the way. Look at Starbucks fighting unionized stores at locations one by one by one. This the union movement is being crushed at the top level from the most va top valued corporations period right down to stop it stop it stop it in germany it's the opposite uh in france and italy uh and other places it's the opposite but uh, again uh if it works in germany it's because socialism works in germany and in america we can't have that and so america is fighting within itself to defeat its own progress 
by holding back kids to go into certain trades because if you go there you have become a, a you're you're kind of a socialist person it, it just it, ah it's 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 kind of goofy um some will like what i say some will not but what can i tell you um hmm. uh jennifer uh when she uh, finished her working career her last uh, her last 10 years of work were some of the most pleasurable she ever had she was a a building operator and um, she assisted uh, a, a fellow that she teamed up with at one company and they moved to another company as a tandem and uh, they ended up managing a 38-story office tower in downtown Calgary. And the stories that I would hear from her were just incredible because they had uh, 25 building operators. They had actual 25, basically, guys that ran the elevators, kept the escalators running, made sure the air conditioning was working, uh, security systems, uh, the parkade had to keep working. All the logistical stuff of running a building uh, when you have a 38 story building and you've got 4,000 people in there, you need 25 people to run that thing uh, full time and 24 seven. Um, and she was in the admin office uh, with the uh, building, the manager, the, the top guy, she was the, the number two person running this place. And uh, the budget on this was millions of dollars. It was unbelievable. And then the money these guys were paid was incredible. These, these, uh, these guys who were running the, uh, making sure the water fountains worked, to make sure the toilets got, you know, function, they were functioning if they had backed up, um, uh, the electric stuff, if they had to hire trades guys in, which they would do, they would then be with those guys to, you know, supervise them and, and help them out in any way. But the building guys who were there had what we called their tickets. You had a ticket, which means, which means you were a licensed uh boiler room operator uh, you, you were you were you were certified to uh, to operate these different pieces of equipment to keep buildings running the money they made was phenomenal the overtime money they made was phenomenal they had a very comfortable lifestyle all these 25 guys uh did really well and they all strive to get their uh, first class or second class uh ticket for uh, being a building operator and they knew that if, a, if you had the first ticket or the second ticket the one or two position you could go to any building in the city you could go to any industrial site in the province in the country uh and if you wanted to if you were so inclined and you wanted to go work up north as we say go up north where the oil uh the oil sands are uh you could work up there and uh, you could be on these labor camps and you know these different working camps and stuff and you'd make ridiculous money you'd be away from your family for three weeks at a time and you'd be home for a week and then you go back up for three weeks but you would make ungodly money um if you were like i said so inclined jennifer did this job for 10 years loved working with these guys and uh, just found it fascinating all the things they had to do all the time and as a building ages a building gets rebuilt piece by piece by piece just like an old car if you if you own a Ford Mustang from 1965 and you drive it from time to time, you are constantly rebuilding that car because that's what old cars need, tender, loving care to constantly keep them on the road. Buildings are identical. They're filled with people seven, six days a week, or five days a week, and then the weekends, so skeletal staff, and they need to function uh, every day safely. And the fire department comes in with in safety inspections. The city comes in for all kinds of inspections. It has to function. It has to function well. And these building guys have challenges as a building ages. As they get older, the building gets older, and they rebuild stuff over time. On the outside, the building looks the same to us. But on the inside, it's a completely different thing. And then you have tenants that come and go. And when a tenant leaves, an entire floor might be gutted and re-engineered completely with new wiring, new uh, new everything for the new office. And it might be a law firm, then it's an accounting firm, then it's an, an, an architectural firm, and it's a whatever firm. And each company needs its own layouts. Fascinating stuff. The money made by these people was incredible. The problem was, even in Canada, where we are apparently unbelievably socialist, there isn't a national program to educate high school kids to become college, uh, community college students, to get these trade certificates, 
to become employable by these corporations. It's all by the individual themselves. Individual Canadians have to figure it out for yourself. And guidance counselors at high schools are unqualified, generally speaking, to guide kids through trade schools and uh, this area. And this leaves a hole in this economy. I, I keep coming back to what I want to get at here. There's a hole in the economy here that is a big one that is not being solved right now. We have got young 20-somethings not entering lucrative, lucrative trades where they could be set up for the rest of their lives because the dream is to become a professional athlete. The dream is to become an actor. The dream is to become an influencer or become a famous person and to be the one that people take pictures of rather than the picture taker or the picture looker, the one who just looks at the photos. And there's a certain percentage of, of, the, of, the, of the workforce that doesn't go to work. And I got to tell you, if you're a plumber, you're never unbusy. You're always busy. You're a, a brake specialist for a, a car dealership. You're always busy. Uh, you're a transmission person at a transmission shop. You don't get laid off. That's what I'm talking about. You don't get let go. The American economy is in this area where there's a desperate need for certain class of types of workers, and they're not coming. They're not coming. And the only source for these workers is from other countries that have them. The problem is that at the border, people are trying to come in to the United States in any way possible. They don't have these skills either. They, they have the janitorial skills. They're the ones who are gonna do the lawns. They're the ones who can trim hedges. They're the ones who've got the physical labor. They're young and they're physical, physically able to work. Canada and America needs those workers as well for, for farming and many other businesses, I agree. But this, this area here where the real dollars are generated is being lost completely. I saw, I saw a, a thing last night about a um, company that um, needed 15 workers uh, on top of the 20 they had in the Philadelphia area. And uh, the, uh, the manager was being asked, how much business are you not making? because you don't have these 15 people that you can't find. You can't find them in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area. Been trying for years, still can't get them in. Uh, the answer was uh, $5 million in sales are lost because 15 people aren't here. We have the business. We have, we can, we could do the, or we could fulfill orders. Can't find them. And it's, uh, it's producing uh, circuit boards, uh, it's high tech, but not like the highest of highest of tech, but it's a high tech job, clean job. Um, no, um, you're not in a steel plant. You're not in a coal mine. Uh, th th this is a very comfortable office setting, wonderful benefits, tremendous stability. Can't find these people. And uh, the United States won't allow people of that skill into the country from other countries. There's the broken immigration system coming back to haunt. Um, Canada has a problem, uh, uh, Germany has solved it or is trying to solve it by partnering with business. Uh, we'll partner with our businesses in this country to make sure they get these employees and we'll get the kids who can do these jobs, we'll give them the education for nothing. We'll, we'll get them through high school, get them into college and show them and their parents when they're 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. Go, this, go down this path of a career path into these schools, you'll come up with these certificates and here are 50 companies that will hire you and you will be able to get a house, a car, raise a family, uh, have a pension, six weeks paid holiday year minimum uh, plus other benefits. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, a lot of uh, uh, these jobs are all filled. I mean, they're just taken and uh, they're taken by German nationals, the, the, the Germans. And uh, why not? Uh, the country looks at it and goes, this is a long-term investment for us because we can get guys and girls to go into these trades when they're in their 20s. They will add to our benefit of our, corp of our, com our country's GDP will grow because we don't, we don't import these parts and these items. We produce them domestically and for our own domestic businesses. And then we're we're the exporters. We're not the importers. We're the exporters of this work, and we're highly paid for it. 
because our competition doesn't exist. Look at America. Look at Canada. They can't produce this stuff. They don't have enough people to do it. They don't have the skills to do it. And for now, the American dollar is loved all overseas. And so the product is just purchased and brought in. Interesting, isn't it? Just saying, uh, it's just a reflection of what's going on out there. Uh, is everything perfect? No. Will it ever be perfect? No. Um, could it be ever perfect? No. no it'll never be perfect. Is it perfect in Germany? No. It's not perfect in Germany. It's different. It is what it is. Now, in France, I'm reading headlines today. I've told you about this already, that the, the retirement age is being proposed to go from 62 to 64. Riots, well, not yet riots. They're coming to that. Protests in the streets all over France as the population rises up and says, no, we're not going for a 64 mandatory retirement age. It's going to stay at 62 because it used to be 60. They've already seen the decline in the standard of living to go from 60 to 62 before we retire with benefits. Now the government wants to raise the bar to 64. The United States government, the Canadian government, they're thinking of raising the bar from 65 to 67 to 68. You don't know that, but that's being talked about. Um, talk to your friends, the Republicans in the Congress, and ask them one-on-one, -on -one, what's the answer to Social Security? Simple. Don't give it to people until they're 68. That's the answer, because we don't have the money to give them. That's the thing, but they won't say it, uh, but that's the deal. That's the only answer. It's the only solution, is to delay benefits until you're 68 years of age. We've seen it in corporate America, where unionized employees of airlines... Uh, who are all have been in there for years and years, they have a set pay packet and benefits and everything else. All new hires coming in, come in at the low level. They come in at kind of a starting salary and they have to work for the airline for five years or eight years before they become one of the unionized uh, top paid people. This is the, this, the, 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 the dividing of the of the layers of management uh, within corporate America. It's happening in the auto sector. It's happening all over the place. Those who have these unionized type deals, uh, good or bad, uh, which airline do you want to talk about that needs staff? All of them. Um, why do they need staff? Because people don't want to work for airlines. Why don't they want to work for airlines as a brand new employee? Because you want to work for 14 bucks an hour and get the crap kicked out of you by uh, upset travelers? I don't think so. I don't need that mental anguish from, from travelers to, to earn 14 an hour. I'd rather get a job somewhere else. And that's what's happening. And airlines are struggling to get staff in. As long as airlines keep sub subcontracting out services like baggage handling to baggage handling type unions or, or outfits that pay their guys 14, 16 bucks an hour, your bags are going to get lost. Uh, you're going to be upset. And uh, the airlines are going to try to cut costs everywhere they can. They don't want to pay their employees or they don't believe they can pay their employees a wage that they should be getting. And there's there's the problem. Here in Canada, we heard uh, yesterday and today, story came out that uh, our second airline, WestJet, there's Air Canada and then there's WestJet, the two national carriers. WestJet is based in Calgary, Alberta, Canada in the West. Air Canada is based in Toronto and Montreal in the East. They both fly nationally and they both fly internationally. Air Canada is larger than WestJet, but WestJet is growing. Always like a, it's like a Southwest Airlines that does international flights as well. Domestically, Canada comes into the U.S. and back. They announced yesterday, uh, or press release was was released yesterday that said WestJet will not fly to Europe for 2023 from the city of Halifax. Uh, now, for you in America, you're going. This is a nothing burger story. What do I care? Why do I need to know? Here's what you need to know: a carrier is canceling all flights to London, Paris. Frankfurt uh, to, to Europe for this for the summer of 2023, the height of the travel season from Halifax. Um, they've they've now announced that they've canceled their flights to Europe from Vancouver, and I think another. City, I'm trying to remember the other city. Was it Toronto? They are almost walking away from Europe entirely, which leaves it to just Air Canada from Canada itself, which means for consumers going to cost a lot more money to fly to Europe because there's no competition. United Airlines cannot fly a plane from Chicago to Toronto, pick up a bunch of Canadians and take them to London Heathrow. Uh-uh, not allowed. United flies from Chicago over Canada, <laughs> over the Atlantic, and lands in London 
and reverse. You do not get to do a hop, skip, and jump and pick up and drop off. Mm -mm -mm. Same thing for Air Canada. We These airlines can't do that either. They can't go from Toronto to New York, pick up a bunch of New Yorkers, and take them to Paris. No, 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 no. You fly from Toronto to Paris and and you live off of your Canadian people. If an American wants to fly on Air Canada, I don't know why you'd want to do that. You want to fly on Air Canada, you go to Canada first and get on an Air Canada flight. And if a, and a Canadian wants to fly in United, I don't know why a Canadian would want to fly United. You would go to Chicago and catch a flight and go on United. Um, WestJet is uh, citing the fact that uh, the reason we're doing it is we can't find staff. We can't find staff to work the airport and to uh, handle the plane because it's not just a matter of you coming to the airport and talking to a person at the gate and getting your boarding pass and then going to the gate waiting area and then being called to go to your seat and all. no it, there, there's all kinds of employees needed to operate an airline that we don't see at the airport they're down below uh they're working in the middle of the night to clean the plane up uh, there's the mechanics we never see they're working in the hangar way over there they can't get those people they can't get enough of those people they they already know in january we cannot operate european flights with any guaranteed regularity we we don't feel comfortable being able to offer a schedule to fly canadians to europe and back and if we don't deliver if we have flights delayed or canceled we have to give them alternative arrangements which means we lose money so if you give uh, the airline a thousand bucks to fly from halifax to london and your flight is canceled you will get a flight on air canada or some other way to to London, it might be the, the next day, which means I'm going to put you up in a hotel. These guys instantly lose money because the $1,000 airfare, which is 500 each direction, after government taxes and fees come off the top, the airline is getting $300. Well, they're getting $300 to fly you on a seven-hour flight to uh, London. Uh, there's no money in that flight. Uh, that 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 they're making 20 bucks off you. There's there's no margins in this business and they can't afford to pay $50 an hour to all their employees who look after you. They lose money on every seat they sell for $300 net net to them per segment. It doesn't pay. American Airlines are finding the same thing and so they're cutting and adjusting their schedules to where it works for them. And that's the way that is. It's, it's uh, amazing. I have heard that um, a couple of years ago, I heard that on WestJet, of all the millions of passengers they fly, domestically, internationally, uh, I mean, tens of millions, that they make about a dollar fifty a flight per person on average net profit. It's 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 unthinkable how little money comes out all, after all the expenses of paying for the plane, the pilots, the attendants, the uh, advertising, the the square footage rent, the fees to the air, airports baggage handlers, advertising, legals, insurance, I mean, everything. Uh, running an airline is incredibly expensive and then unbelievably regulated. There's a couple of bucks left over per person, per flight when it's all said and done. And it's the same at American, United, Delta, um, JetBlue, Southwest, uh, Air Canada, any air, name off any airline you want. The cost of being an airline is unbearably expensive. The margins are unbearably thin when it's said and done, and we don't understand it because we go, I just paid $300 for this ticket. How come you can't fly me from here to there for like $300 with 150 other people? We don't, I don't get it. It's because we don't get it. And uh, there again is this gap. And as I've said to you before, airlines don't have their airplanes uh, retrofitted in America or Canada. They fly them to Mexico costa rica panama uh other countries where the labor is one third the price one quarter the price they fly the parts in there from boeing and from airbus the, the parts they need and retrofit the planes there and then bring them back to uh, the home country for servicing it's cheaper to fly the airplane empty from canada to costa rica refit it and fly it back and put it into service than to do it in Canada. And part of it is there are 
the workers aren't there, the skill workers aren't available, and uh, the dollars to pay to make it fly aren't there either. And that is the way this world is evolving as we go. We are racing to the bottom on all levels of our society. We are we are doing the race to the bottom. We want we want sweatshirts like this. Um, the importers of this sweatshirt uh, want to bring it in for two bucks. They can't get this made in uh, in uh, Virginia, Tennessee, Kentucky, um, the Carolinas. You cannot produce a sweatshirt of this quality in the United States with American workers and American um, technology and you know, what have you for two bucks a pop that cannot be done, but you can get this done in somewhere in Pakistan, somewhere in Bangladesh, somewhere in the third world where the workers are getting 12 cents an hour, 15 cents an hour. And this thing can be brought into the, into the USA for maybe two bucks a pop. The t-shirt I'm wearing down here, they're brought in for 50 cents each. You go into your favorite, um, a store to buy a t-shirt, a blank t-shirt that you want to put a design on yourself, try to find a t-shirt for under six, eight bucks. Very difficult. Normally they're $10 for a blank t-shirt. Want a t-shirt with a design on it? If it's a licensed design, out of this world expensive. NFL.com, check it out yourself. You want to get a t-shirt with a Pittsburgh Steeler logo on it? You're not going to find one for $4.99 or $9.99. Try $34.99, what have you. Um, we've priced ourselves out of our own markets in that, in that way. And we demand, uh, you know, goods at the best price we can get. We don't think twice about buying an item of clothing. We don't even look at where it's made. Uh, we don't, we don't care. We just want to know how much is it? How much isn't it? And there's the world racing to the bottom. We are shifting production off wherever we can shift it to, to keep the costs down. Why does Apple make this in China? Uh, when they started making this in China, when they started it back in the uh, what 90s, uh, cost to produce this in China was a lot less than it is now. Now, where are they moving plants to? India. Why are they moving uh, plants to India? Cheaper than China. That's why. It's, it's going to be cheaper than China and less politically difficult to deal with. If they're going to go elsewhere, where else would they go? They're going to go to countries where the labor costs are cheap as get up. Their taxes for, say, property taxes are cheap. Their regulations are going to be extremely non-existent um, where the workers have no rights. And uh, the military junta runs things uh, accordingly. And the power is always on. And the workers show up on time. And they're grateful for their jobs. And they don't complain. And that's, I'm sorry to say, the way it is. And Germans buy these products as well as uh, Brits, Canadians, Brazilians. We all buy this stuff, but it's all made in China at the moment or going to be made in India or other third world countries. This is where we're going to buy it from. We're not going to change that. No matter where you live in the world, we're all racing to the bottom at the same time. Um, that's the story as I see it on that front there. Um, Companies out there are trying to make money and trying to make a profit at every turn. And they're on, under unbearable pressure from their investors to give them a return. The cruise lines right now are offer, offering cruises at what you might think are unbelievable deals. But when you get on the ship, you find out, oh my God, a cola is $4. A rum and cola is $12 and a mandatory 20% tip. 240 tip on a drink. Um, you want to have a steak in the steakhouse, uh, that's $50, $80 each to walk in the door of that steakhouse. You want a glass of wine with that? That's $12. You want the prime cut? That's another five, $10. They're getting nickel and dime to death. Cruise passengers are finding quickly that, oh my God, the cruising deal is gone. I can't, there is no cruising deal. Uh, our friends at, um, at Royal Caribbean, for example, um, Royal Caribbean, uh, a couple of years ago, I was just looking at their stats, just pure, pure uh, interest. I was doing this on my travel show the other night. Um, the long-term debt for Royal Caribbean in 2019 was $9 billion. That's what they were carrying in total debt. Their, uh, their debt uh, in 2021, $19.3 billion, $10 billion more in two years. 
COVID, the shutdown. Uh, their liabilities went from $17 billion to $27 billion. Um, the shareholder equity went from $12 billion to $5 billion. Uh, net income. In 2017, Royal Caribbean had a $1.6 billion profit. 2017, $1.8 billion. 2019, they were pushing uh, $1.9 billion. 2020, they lost $5.8 billion. And in 2021, they lost $5.2 billion again. There's $11 billion in losses in two years. The three years prior to that, they earned $5 billion combined. So it took them three years to make $5 billion. It took them two years to lose eleven. Absolute disaster. These guys are carrying debt now at 8 to 12% interest. Going to get worse. Interest rates are going higher. That's going to get worse. And these cruise lines are scrambling to survive. And the question is, who will survive intact as they are and who won't? Uh, who has to sell off divisions and that kind of thing? We've already seen the destruction of the cruise industry in, in many ways. A lot of ships have been sent to scrap because the ships are worth more as, as metal, as recycled metal than an operating ship because cruise lines are finding that their oldest ships are not allowed to enter ports where the rules have been upgraded for clean air emissions. These ships don't meet clean air emission standards. Even in good old America, where the emission standards are almost were almost non-existent, were almost non-existent, those have been raised. And now these old, clunky, 35-year-old cruise ships cannot be sailed into certain cities anymore to pick up and drop off passengers. The ship, rather than spend $100 million to upgrade it, the owners of these ships are sending them to Turkey for dis being dis just cut up into pieces. The, the steel is worth more money in chunks than the ship as a floating entity. That's the difference that's happening in the cruise lines, um, which means fewer ships are in the fleets. Eventually, there will be lower capacity, and that means the dollars that are needed to go back to the bankers to pay for all the loans they've taken to handle COVID have to be paid back with higher interest rates, and cr certain cruise lines won't be able to do it. And so there will be, there will be fallout there. Who's going under and when and how and what? I don't know, but I think it's a slow motion train wreck that is happening over there. Airlines, as I said before, uh, they're having their own issues. Uh, every day that goes by, every airline's fleet of planes are a day older. And American Airlines are flying some of the oldest planes in the business. And uh, Americans are being... Uh, um, underserviced with really old inventory that they're boarding. Uh, there are planes that, that Americans are taking for flights every day that were built in the 80s and the 90s that technically are airworthy. Yeah, but really third worlders is where these belong at that. Uh, the new planes coming off the line, uh, you can't keep up with the back orders. Um, and of course, replace a plane is incredibly expensive so anyway um the economy has a lot of issues to it there's a lot of opportunities for the economy but there's a lot of headwinds for the economy as well um uh, at the moment we're down 55 points on the dow five on the s p down 36 on nasdaq um sofi is down 10 cents to 658 it would appear i'm gonna double check our quotes right now before we go uh, go through here 20 minutes we start trading uh for the day uh, we seem to be at 663 on SoFi. I'm very, uh, very happy with this, um, considering that the shares uh, in the last week, just the last five trading days, have had a nice little run here from the 550 neighborhood now into the 660 neighborhood. Not too bad. Um, going forward will be interesting. Uh, keep in mind that in the last year, SoFi shares were in the $12 level a year ago, $13 level a year ago, and uh, got as low as $4.24. We're really only at $6.63. We've only just started a turnaround. This is an absolute nothing burger so far. And we're going to see how this uh, continues on. I think SoFi's future is, is fantastic. Uh, GameStop up 19 cents, a little turnaround here since uh, I've been watching it this morning. We were negative about 50 cents uh, maybe 45 minutes ago. Uh, over at uh, Matterport, up a penny, uh, 23 me Looks like we're up about six cents in the pre-market. Spire down about three. Nothing on ATIP yet. Smart Rent up eight. Sextera is up three cents uh, last I saw. Apple shares uh, 
are up 17 cents. They lost 293 yesterday. Goldman Sachs was up 370 yesterday. It's up another 46 cents now, almost 358 a share. Cisco down 29 yesterday, up 23 cents now. Tesla down 11.20 yesterday, down 189 today. I think we might be uh, coming into this 160, 70 range for a little bit here. Arc Innovations, uh, 188 loss yesterday, a 30 cent gain right now to 38.81. Microsoft down 5.45 yesterday, up 125 this morning to 243.96. Bed Bath Beyond down up 32 cents uh, yesterday. Uh, Bed Bath Beyond now down 11 this morning, 275 a share. Pfizer down 24 yesterday, down a dollar five this morning. Uh, on uh, on uh, mixed uh, feelings about its future. Although the stock was down almost $2 a share on the initial release of their financials, now they're only down 99 cents. 42.53 a share approximately. I'm jumping around right there. HPQ, home, uh, uh, Hewlett Packard lost 41 yesterday. It's up one penny this morning, 28.84. Carvana up a dollar this morning to $11. Don't know why, wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot cattle prod. Uh, Google uh, down 276 yesterday, up 37 cents this morning. Amazon down 169 yesterday, up 53 cents this morning. Nvidia lost $12.03 yesterday, down 13 cents at the moment. 191.50 is where we're at uh, at the moment. There it is. That's the story. We're going to be hearing in Canada, the USA, uh, and across Europe all this year, all this summer about wage demands. We're going to hear a lot about wage demands, definitely from unionized workers who have been crushed the last 10, 15 years by big business and government helping big business uh, to crush unions. Um, the unions have uh, realized, hey, <laughs> there's full unemployment. Uh, everybody who wants a job can get a job. Um, uh, skilled unionized workers are hard to come by and they're, uh, they're getting more difficult to keep. Uh, you're going to have to pay these guys uh, more than a 2% pay raise or a 3% pay raise. And um, they're going to get it. Uh, they're going to get substantial pay raises. You're going to be hearing about two, three, and four-year contracts that will shock you as to how high the percentages are. But keep in mind, you could say the uh, reason is 8% uh, inflation last year, 6% this year maybe. That's why they're, they're what they are. But what it really is, uh, is that uh, unionized contracts for the last decade have been crushed relentlessly by um, the free enterprise where um, the extra cash that companies make have been going back to buying back stock and not going into the into their labor uh, uh, area. Uh, so these folks will be getting 2 and 3% raises and now they're going, it's payback time. And uh, we want a 2% raise for the last five years we didn't get. That's 10% right there. Now we want the 8% raise and we want the 6% raise going forward. We're looking for 20, 25%. And uh, this is going to be interesting to see how this all works out because certain companies are going to play chicken with their unions. Um, and the unions are going to say, we dare you to uh, shut the plant down because we have zero unemployment in this country. All of us can get a job somewhere else. Back in the 80s, when I saw the last of the inflation destruction of Canada and the United States and the rest of the planet as inflation was nuts, um, interest rates at 16 and 18 percent at that time when a factory would shut down or threaten to shut down union workers would take pay cuts to keep their jobs or they would take 30 hours a week of work instead of 40 hours a week so that everybody kept their jobs in the plant uh, but plant owners at that time uh, they didn't see the upside of doing that and they didn't see a future in north american production what they saw was through their through their uh, through all their consultants why don't you open up a, <coughs> up a plant in uh, in Taiwan? Why don't you open up a plant in India? Why don't you know, open up a plant somewhere in the a Asia area? You only have to pay one tenth the salary. Even Mexico, uh, one one sixth the salary uh, of an American worker, and uh, uh, the the union thing isn't a problem down there because you, you can just fire people if they you know if they act up. You just get room and only have to give them severance. Just kick them out. Um, and business went for that big time. Um, but business also got smart in America, like Apple got smart. Apple is a genius outfit. They don't have Apple factories overseas. There are no Apple factories overseas. The factories overseas that make this product are under license to Apple. They're not Apple at all. 
they are licensed to produce Apple product. Lululemon does the same thing with their clothing. Same with the, all the other brands that you love, that you, we love to shop for. Nike doesn't have shoe factories in Asia. Nike contracts shoes to be made by, by, uh, by uh, uh, workers there. So Nike is only in the USA as a seller of the goods, but the manufacturing is not done by Nike. It's done by contracted outfits same for all the other brands that you love and follow it's the it's the pattern it's the race to the bottom and that's what's going on right now all right uh welcome to the show happy times yay um let's see what happens today i got the dow up 67 points uh uh we're uh, running up here again um like i said i i didn't see a massive uh, a blow off this morning, like a panic sell or anything like that, or a follow through from yesterday's selling. Didn't happen. The Dow's up 69, S&P's up nine, NASDAQ is now up 30. This is all in the last few minutes. A big turnaround has taken place. Uh, US home prices fell for the fifth straight month in November, Case Schiller report. That is the underlying weakness uh in the u.s economy right now housing prices have fallen again for the fifth straight month now for some of you this is good news uh for some of you this is what you want to hear um because housing prices have been just insane going up to last year with zero interest rates how can that real estate not go up now all of a sudden with higher rates and projected higher rates yet real estate is under pressure could that mean lower rents maybe could it mean Will it mean a higher supply of housing available only from existing inventory, not new builds? Why would a new home builder go out and buy, uh, speculate and build a thousand new houses right now? If prices are falling, you're not going to build new houses. You're only going to build them if they're pre-sold. So there isn't going to be an inventory glut coming our way. The question is, is there a sales slowdown because interest rates are rising to the point where people can't afford the mortgages on these priced high priced houses that now have to come down to make it work. There's an adjustment going on, definitely. And it's a race to the bottom <laughs> as well. Keep in mind, a lot of you folks like staying at home and you don't want to go to the office anymore. So your needs for housing have changed. Americans needs for housing has completely changed from what it used to be at one point. We don't need a commuter house. We now need a home office house. We need a place where I can work from home where my wife and I work from home, where one of us who works from home does uh, admin work. The other one that works from home does light industrial work. Uh, I'm a woodworker and I've converted my garage to a shop. Um, I've, uh, you know, I like to do uh, car repairs and uh, I'll just do them in my garage or um, I'm, I'm, I'm in the import export business, or I'm in, um, I'm uh, moving goods around. Uh, I buy goods from these people and these people put them together and make this product. And then I ship it out. And I have the UPS truck coming to my house every day to dump stuff off, pick stuff up. And I'm, I do it from my home. Uh, my home may, may not be in downtown, wherever my house is out in the burbs or I'm out in the country. I now need a house of that stature to do what I do, but I definitely am not going to set up an industrial, in an industrial park, uh, a, a business where I have these unbelievable business taxes, unbelievable costs to be a business in some of these jurisdictions. No, I'm working from home. Then of course, there are many of you who uh, know of or are aware of uh, people who are now consultants. They uh, used to work for one corporation in a cubicle. Now they're working at home as a consultant to that corporation from their house. And they're only giving them 20 hours a week of their time. They have another corporation they give 20 hours a week to. That's not even in the same state. That's across the country over there. They're working from their home for those guys. And uh, these folks are making double the money they've ever made before, if not triple, because they're not individual employees. They're consultants and they've used their corporate name as the entity that does the work. So it's a corporate to corporate relationship as opposed to a corporate to human relationship. Things have changed and uh, continue to evolve. Welcome to 2023. I'm glad you're here. Uh, thank you all of you who have been popping in, saying hi and talking to each other. These uh, uh, thumbs ups you're handing out already. Thank you for, for that. Uh, hope you don't mind the uh, the rant today. Um, we're going to see how things, uh, you know, move along here. Um, so much fun. Uh, so much fun. What's so much fun? Um, 
What else is going on here? Um, don't know. Um, anybody have any questions on the market? Let me know. Uh, options, no man's Good morning. All Pfizer down 120 in the pre market after earnings report beat estimates by nine, but also expects 2023 sales to decline as much as 33%. That's true. Uh, definitely on that COVID drug. They're looking at the COVID drug to drop dramatically in sales. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, mm. SC is saying cruises used to be full of really nice people. I've seen some horrible people and behavior recently. Uh, this, this is the thing about going on a cruise. You have no idea who you're with. And when you're on a ship of, uh, say 4,000 people and 1500 crew, 1500 people in a tight spot, uh, hopefully everyone gets along. Uh, whereas if you go on an all inclusive resort holiday, say go to Mexico and you're in a hotel with a thousand rooms, there might be 1500 people, 2000 people there, two, two people per room. Maybe, maybe there's 2,500. Uh, but you're spread out over a huge piece of real estate. You got maybe a thousand feet of beach, and you can go golfing, and you can go play tennis, and you can, you know, you don't, you're not in a cramped little pool area on the top of the ship uh, on sea days. Um, you're not going to have the same issue, perhaps, as you would have maybe on a crowded cruise ship where it's a little humid and alcohol has a way of turning people into morons. Uh, yeah, there is that. No, no question. Um, Anyway, there it is. Uh, some people have forgotten how to be polite and kind since COVID. I, I see so many comments these days that are pure vitriol. Not nice at all. Um, I'm with you there. I, 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 I'm on the front line of that stuff. <laughs> um, what can I say? Uh, anyway, um, thank you all for, uh, for uh, hanging out with me today. Um, hope you're finding it uh, somewhat interesting. Um, Anyway, there it is. Um, uh, Merkel says, we don't have socialism anymore in Germany. The German Democratic uh, Republic had socialism, but doesn't exist. Uh, Merkel, uh, I have to apologize to you because I'm using that term socialism in a real general way. Uh, uh, just so you know, um, um, most people don't know what socialism actually is. They think it's something like a communist thing. Like, like they don't understand the, the absolute definition of one thing versus another. Um, but there are uh, people in Canada and in America who are anti-government in every sense of the word, no matter what. They want government out of their lives, but they want their Medicare. They want government out of their lives, but they want the police. They want government out of their lives, but we want uh, we want fire firefighters at beck and call. And we want city hall to work. And we want the highways to be okay. We don't want potholes on expressways. And so you've got this 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 back and forth argument going all the time. So Mirko, um, uh, I'm I'm not trying to um, you know classify Germany as a socialist country in any negative way at all. Um, and that's only because I have mere minutes to make my rant, not hours. <laughs> love Germany, love Germans, uh, respect that country, and uh, it amazes me that uh, a country like Germany that is almost landlocked, not quite with the North Sea access, but a country like Switzerland that is landlocked has one of the highest standards of living in the planet. That's what blows my mind in a positive way. I am so impressed with how um, certain countries have done incredibly well under the circumstances they're in. Austria, another country that's landlocked, Slovenia, Czech Republic. These countries have a very good standard of living for their citizens. They don't have access to oceans directly. They have to go through other countries to get their product in and out. And yet it works. Um, it's amazing. Uh, but again, you, it's all for one and one for all. Uh, or you go your individual way. And uh, right now in certain countries, it's more like the attitude is more like we're better off without government. We can do it ourselves. And um, unfortunately, that thinking has left a certain percentage of that population way down here um, suffering those consequences of that kind of policy thinking. And um, unfortunately, um, in Canada, there's a homeless problem. In America, there's a homeless problem. And it is growing. And it isn't just, it is not just drug addicts or down and outers. It, it is families um, with children, um, folks that caught, got caught in a homeless situation out of nowhere, 
Maybe it's a medical bill that put him under. Maybe it's a, an accident that put him under, a death in the family that put him under, a loss of a job. Uh, who knows what? A million reasons. Everyone's reasons are different and they're, unto them, they're, they're unique to themselves. But it's undeniable that when you go for a car ride in certain cities in North America, generally speaking, uh, if you know where to go, you're going to find scores of down and outers and homeless. Uh, and it's, it's, it's scary how many there are. It is absolutely scary. And the answer to that problem from some people is lock them up. That's the answer. And uh, that isn't the solution. It, it can't be the solution uh, because society can't afford to feed and house all of them. It, 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 society would be better off to get them on their feet so they can be on their own. Certain folks of that crowd are more than capable of being able to be successful if only they could get the head start, the, the assistance, the whatever. But it's uh, it's a mentality. It's a state of mentality. It's it's the world in which we're in. And I, I don't have the answers. I'm just spewing my old man rhetoric. And uh, that's it. Anyway, there you go. Uh, what else is going on here? Uh, it's Ryan says, I got caught in the Tesla run-up even before earnings. Uh, ended up rolling to July 195s, riding for 25 bucks. I bought back on the dip yesterday for 20. It's still uh, a bit to go, but cash off the table. Thank you. Very interesting. Um, sell my house fast enough for Marlboro. Good morning, Bruce. I am number 134. Uh, 132. Thank you. And so Rolo is saying, curious to see if SoFi takes a run at seven again. 666, I think, is the last trade I saw. Let's see if I'm updated here. Yeah, $6.66. Karen, my parents came to the U.S. from Germany and Austria and much preferred the European system. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, Luga, actually, Slovenia is not landlocked, not comparable to Switzerland, though. Um, uh, Gaiotti, not to mention people with disabilities or mental illnesses. Exactly. FX, I'm 138. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for these thumbs ups, guys. Nick, a civilized society takes care of its most vulnerable. John Bickman, 143 thumbs up. Gaiotti, someone once said America has three corporations in a trench coat masquerading as a country. Laughing out loud. DQ, uh, Gaiotti, do you have an issue where ATP freezes at 928? Do I have an issue where ATP freezes at 9? 28. I, I don't mm, I don't get the question. My, what am I missing there? Deep. I love Slovenia. I need to go back. Beach Boy. Been a long time since we had a nice rant from Angry Bruce. <laughs> oh, what can I say? Um, is the world perfect? No. Is, it a, is there all kinds of opportunity? Yes. Are there generous people out there? Yes. Um, are there people more generous than they need to be? Yes. Um, are there great countries? Yeah. Are there shitty countries? Yeah. Mediocre? Yeah. Uh, is yours one of them? I don't know. It uh, depends on your perspective. Uh, you know, you live in a country that has a dictator in the third world and you're part of the dictator's family. Life's good. Uh, life, it's all good here. I don't see any homeless problems in my mansion. Uh, but if you are in a high-end, uh, well-to-do country and you are a down and outer, life isn't good. Uh, and so, you know, uh, good or bad, it doesn't matter. It's uh, individual stories. ATP is Fidelity's trading software. Uh, says Gaiotti, um, ATP. And, uh, and the question was, uh, uh, what was the question about this again? I, I, I just, where am I? Sorry. I missed this question here again. Um, uh, do, do you have, a, oh, Gaiotti, DQ is asking Gaiotti, do you have a question? Okay. It's between two viewers. I don't have to worry about it. Thank you for that. Larry, thank you for the bells. Uh, let's start trading and see if you guys can make money today. Um, I still believe the world's full of mostly good people. I agree with you. I think you're right. I think they are too. Um, and uh, I appreciate all the good people that come here and hang out with us and uh, share thoughts. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, uh, appreciate you all being here on this channel. No question about it. 250 of you are here. How you doing? Welcome to my show uh, with Stock Markets with Bruce. Uncle Bruce here from Palm Desert, California. Uh, love that you're all here with us, and hopefully you're going to have a, a very good day today. DQ, my question was for Gaiotti Uncle. We thank you, DQ. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks, Larry. Never get to say that. Uh, J-Boy, number 146. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, all. Thank you for uh, popping in. Let's go uh, member-only con comment now. Please become a member of this channel. Join our family. Love to have you. Um, if you're not a member of the family, it's all right. Hang out and... Uh, watch what we do and and um, and hopefully you'll understand how uh, option writing 
can work for you. Um, and if it uh, intrigues you, I hope it does. Um, uh, we welcome you to uh, become a member of the channel if you'd like. And uh, make commentary with us. Enjoy the knee emojis. And also those of you who want to, you know, want to learn to become an option writer and maybe quit your day job or change your retirement um, scenario or change your cash flow needs at home. Classes are available for you on my website anytime. And uh, I invite you to check it out. Um, um, one, one class at a time is all you need to take. There's no rush here. There's no obligation where you need to to uh, to uh, buy uh, 14 classes at a time you just just buy one watch one buy another one watch another one learn how option writing works um, become educated on how you can make money writing options on stocks or ETFs or writing options on options that you have uh, there's all kinds of ways to take advantage of uh, this options market and um, uh, it could be uh, just what you're looking for to help you with your uh, minute to uh, week to week, month to month cash flow needs, or it could be um, a program you put together to pay off some bills. It could be the source of income you need to be able to take that vacation you want to take uh, that you haven't taken in a while. It might be the source of income you need to um repair that truck in the driveway that needs three grand worth of work or uh, uh, or replace the truck with a new truck. It might be the cash flow you uh, will work with to buy a new car and finance a new car with. It can change your life. Uh, want to pay off credit cards, student loans, uh, mortgages. How how much do you want to grow the option writing side is up to you. you you're happy bringing in a thousand a month in option premiums and that's all you care about? Great. Do you want to bring in 30000 a month uh, bringing in option premiums? Can be done. Um, there are folks here with all kinds of objectives, needs, and wants, and desires that are here um, with us every day during market hours. You're more than welcome to ask me questions on option trades or whatever. If I can help you, I will. And I thank all of you who are here from wherever you're watching me from. I hope you're going to have a great day today. And let's see if the market is going to be our friend. <laughs> Please be my friend. Uh, let's see what gives. Um, I think we have the the markets at the moment. I'm going to just triple check. It looks like we're green. I'm going to double check that, though, to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um, I've got uh, I've got the Dow up about 25, 26 points at the moment. Slight gain. Uh, we were negative 100 about two hours ago, hour and a half ago. We were down 50 about 45 minutes ago. Up 36 now at the moment. At the moment, we're up 12 on S and P. We're up Nasdaq, uh, 57 points on Nasdaq. Nasdaq is up a half a percentage point. Nothing incredible, but it's a gain. First time in a couple of days. S and P is up a quarter of a point. The Dow is up about a tenth of a point, just short of that. We keep seeing more uh, headlines about layoffs. Uh, Hub Spot is going to lay off about 500 employees. And they're going to consolidate workspace leases. Uh, this seems to be the the popular announcement to make now, the most expected announcement from corporate America is uh, we're going to do some layoffs and we're going to reorganize our expenses by reconsolidating our office space and blah, blah, blah. That's great, but it doesn't tell me that you're a growing concern. It tells me you're on the decline. It doesn't tell me you're expanding your product line. It doesn't tell me that I, I have profits to look forward to that are going to be of a higher nature. What you're telling me is you overhired or you're underperforming on certain um, um, parameters and you're, uh, you're uh, deciding to, ba to back off now, re reorganize and come back at it. Could be the right thing to do. It could well be the right thing to do, but it could also be a sign that maybe there are more problems than you're letting on and that the problems are worse than this, then this is only a Band-Aid solution. That could be the issue too. I'm not accusing uh, HubSpot of anything nefarious. I'm just saying we can read this announcement many, many ways, just like George Costanza would read the line uh, about these pretzels are making me thirsty. There's many ways to read that line. Um, and, uh, well, the same thing here with these uh, layoff announcements. Uh, Jeff, aloha, number 147 on the thumbs up meter. Thank you, my friend. 53 away from 200. Thank you all. Um, Coyote, the world is filled with mostly good people. 
it just isn't run by them. Uh, good people don't need to, gra to crave power and control, so they don't generally end up in charge, just like corporations. Uh, DQ, uh, so what's up with all the uh, colored names on the chat now? What's up with all that? Uh, what is up with that? Uh, Deep Value, finally, uh, NASDAQ is ahead today. Deep Value, VIX is up 8% today. Underlying concerns are out there. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, by the way, we're down 27 on the Dow. Uh, what's with the colored names in the chat? Well, I don't understand. DQ is that? Um, uh, or, or, I, I'm not sure where you're where you're coming from on this, but um, welcome all of you. No matter what your name is, I'm glad you're here. Uh, Sixtera is is up 11 cents to 336. Gone green. GameStop is green, up 52 cents to 2177. Welcome back. Uh, ATIP is green, 43.8 cents. Had a late drop off last night. Did you notice that it was like 41 something on a late sell off? Now it's just popped back here. Tesla, 168.37, up 171. SoFi down two cents at $6.66. Not a, nothing to worry about there. Apple, 143.01, up one penny. Uh, HPQ down 18 cents at 28.64. Google up 48 cents to 98.43. Moderna down 313, 177.74. Cisco down two cents to 48.20. Pfizer uh, down 53 cents at 43. Uh, make it 42.96, down 59 cents on Pfizer. That's better than this morning's uh, first read. I think we were at 41 something this morning, like low 41s, just off 40, oh, 59 cents. I know someone that writes Pfizer contracts and they've been watching this very, very carefully uh, on their uh, on their options. Might be close to uh, making a move. Might be, uh, might be around that time. We'll see what happens. IBM down 49 cents, 134.75. We got Microsoft uh, up 74 cents. Uh, ME up two and a half. Rocket Lab up five and a half. Matterport up seven. Smart Rent up six. Spires up a penny. Amazon up 121. Home Depot is up 248. Netflix down 16 cents. Vanek down 15. Adobe up 350. Google, uh, sorry, Goldman up 50 cents, um, Boeing down 115, Meta, the old Facebook, up 183 to 148.89, um, Royal Caribbean 63.35 up 34 cents, um, uh, let's take a look here, some other stocks, Target up 56, JP Morgan down 37, Costco up 360, Walmart down 13, Disney up 18 cents, Nvidia up 150 to 193 after losing almost $12 yesterday. American Airlines up two pennies, 15.98, trying to get back to 16. There's where we're at. A uh, 35 point drop right now on the Dow as we move forward. Um, what is happening here? Um, Zeta State, thank you for number 151. Appreciate it, my friend. Um, and um, if you are if you own SoFi, your name shows up in green, says Zed, that's what it is. Um, and uh, DQ is saying, my chat was showing non-member usernames as orange, pink, blue, red instead of gray. I don't know what to say to that, DQ. I, I, uh, I am not sure what to make of any of that. Um, I'm just going back in time here. And um, I noticed that Lord O'Flaws, uh, Lord O'Flaws, member for 18 months, Gold Bagel member. Let's go. Money time. Thank you, Uncle Bruce. It has been a pleasure being a member for 13 months. Thank you, Lord O'Flaws. For that comment you made earlier, I, I I missed it because I'm not able to look at the um, uh, the YouTube connection while I'm on the air. I'm looking at StreamYard here, my software that I used to go live on. So thank you for making that comment this morning. I can't even highlight it because it won't allow me to do that on on uh, on StreamYard. It's as if your comment didn't exist, but I love that you did that this morning. Beautiful stuff. I appreciate appreciate it. Um, Coming back here to uh, comments, uh, miraculous. I apologize. I finally bought back into SoFi yesterday at six seventy. This drop is my fault. I should have stayed out. I ruined it for everyone. Now laugh out loud. <laughs> Coyote, it's all good. It happens each time after earnings. Says Coyote to miraculous. J boy DQ. The drugs must be kicking in. DH. I'll have what DQ is having. DQ. J boy. It's about damn time. Uh, Splair. J boy. I thought the same, but uh, he has probably good pills. So you know we're okay. Uh, <laughs> down 20 on the Dow, nothing serious. Um, six there up a penny. GameStop up 42 cents, 21.67. ATIP 41.9 up a half a penny. Tesla down 33 cents. SoFi is unchanged, 6.68 now. SoFi, SoFi volume so far. Yeah, so far the SoFi volume is 5.7 million at the moment uh, uh, on the session at this point. Not like yesterday morning when we were doing 2 million a minute 
for like the first 15 minutes or something like that. We're um, 11 minutes into the day and we got 5.7 million traded. This is a little more normal, uh, not Abby normal, um, but um, yeah, it's okay. Um, what I love is the stock's unchanged and uh, uh, it can fluctuate certainly, but I think the bias is going higher. That's my that's my take on it. Just went to 670. I'm absolutely correct. Good night, everybody. We're out of here. 670, we're close. Oh man, Apple down 29 cents, uh, HPQ down a dime, <clears throat> Google up 51, Moderna down 471 to 176.45. I know a guy that wrote 180s. He's got to be laughing and laughing and laughing about the premium he hauled in on that Moderna, writing those 180 calls and the stock down 450 and now the call is out of the money. He's got to be just chortling to himself about that whole situation. Uh, I am proud of him. Uh, Cisco up nine cents. Uh, Pfizer uh, down 62, 42.93. I know somebody, I know a couple of people. I know actually three people that have written, specifically three specific people that have written calls on Pfizer, who I think are doing rather well right now. And um, they may want to consider rolling down some contracts. I know someone out there who might want to consider taking her call that was written up here and bringing it down three or four or five dollars a share maybe the same time frame but just bringing in more money um you know who i'm talking about uh anyway uh, ibm is down 51 cents uh microsoft up 146 uh me up six cents right now 249 on 23 and me rocket lab 493 up a nickel matterport up five and a half at uh, 345 a share now up six cents smart rent 287 up six cents and spire up a penny at one dollar and eleven cents. When will those spa those spacs, former spacs, take off like SoFi? At any time. That's when. That's all I can tell you. I can't tell you anything more about that. We're just gonna enjoy the show when it happens. We're plus fifty five on the Dow. A buy program just kicked in, big time. That is what's going on right now. Headline just coming across here uh, about SoFi. Uh, let me let me uh, see what it says here. Uh, hang on a minute. I got to kick this over here so I can kick that over there. Uh, headline is uh, SoFi's banking moves are proving a unique advantage, analyst says. There you go. Analysts are generally upbeat about SoFi's banking progress, but at least one is looking for other big drivers to emerge. Uh, the story is in the Market Watch uh, website. SoFi Technologies continues to win praise for its banking efforts after a digital financial after the digital financial services company gave an upbeat earnings forecast and touted the benefits of its banking charter for broader business. The acquisition of a small community bank about a year ago enabled SoFi to become a bank holding company. At the time, SoFi expected the banking move to lower its cost of funding and enable more competitive lending rates. And now in, in its latest earnings report, it's showing some of the early results of its banking efforts. SoFi Bank, a quote, continues to enable flexibility that is proving very valuable in the current macro rate environment. Jeffrey's analyst, John Haight, wrote in Monday's evening report. He added that SoFi's deposits grew 46% sequentially as a result of SoFi's competitive rate offerings with annual percentage yields of 3.75% for checking and savings, which are consistently repriced to remain competitive. Hate has a buy rating and an $8 target on the shares. Um, Moffat Nathanson analyst Eugene Simuni wrote that so-called Neo banks have to decide whether to become real banks themselves or partner with third party banks for deposits. SoFi's choice to do the former seems to be paying off in his view. After obtaining the bank charter, SoFi has been able to supercharge the growth of its digital bank accounting account offering. Deposits rose from 1 billion to 7.3 billion over the course of 2022, he wrote. By using these deposits to finance loans, he said, SoFi has been able to rake in significant net interest income within its financial services business while also providing the lending business with a low cost, stable funding source, which he characterized as a, quote, a unique advantage in the challenging credit market environment, unquote. While the digital banking field is crowded, 
Simuni thinks that SoFi's product is, quote, sufficiently differentiated to allow SoFi to become one of the leading providers in the space over the next several years, unquote. He rates the stock at outperform with a $10 target. Keith Brunet and Woods analyst Michael Perito also acknowledged the banking contributions, though he'll be looking for other drivers. Quote, to date, the revenue acceleration has been largely driven by deposit growth in the SoFi money product, to which the financial services segment is allocated revenue contribution for the spread earned on those deposits, he wrote. However, we note that capital has ground down considerably since the start of the year. 15% leverage at bank versus 59% in the first quarter at 22. To be clear, SoFi still has plenty of capital today, although we think it's reasonable to assume that balance sheet growth and therefore deposit growth will have to slow in 2023 to a more measured pace from a capital consumption standpoint. In his view, SoFi will need to see a meaningful contribution from other areas to reach profitability to hit its guidance. The company said money it expects to reach gap profitability by the fourth quarter of 2023. Perito has a market perform rating at a $5 target price for the stock. SoFi shares rally 12.5% Monday following earnings reports that are off just under 1% in pre-market this morning. That was the article right there. Generally quite a positive article on our uh, friendly shares of SoFi. Very interesting. Um, I like two of those guys. <laughs> I love two of those guys of the three. Uh, interesting. Um, uh, we are right now at uh, 2163, by the way, on GameStop, up 38 cents. So far, right now, 663 off a nickel so far this morning. Um, Dow Jones up 57 points. SP up 18. Uh, NASDAQ looks like we're up 63 right now. Uh, Tesla up $1.76. We're up to 168.42. Uh, ATIP is up half a penny at 41.9. Uh, SoFi now only down four cents, six sixty four. Apple one forty three thirty nine, up thirty nine cents. We have HPQ off just fifteen. Google up sixty six at the moment. All right, everybody. Pfizer is coming on right now. It's rallying. It's only off twenty seven cents. The low of the day forty two seventy. Now at forty three twenty eight. A fifty eight cent turnaround. Down only twenty nine cents on Pfizer. All righty. Fun times, everybody. Welcome to the OK Corral. Nice to have you here. Uh, we'll see how the markets want to keep on rolling. Tomorrow is interest rate day, as you all should be aware. We hear from the Fed tomorrow uh, what is going on uh, with interest rates. The, the uh, consensus is a quarter of a point. The outliers, half a point um, to, to see an increase of that level. That is what we're expecting, wondering, thinking, speculating on. Now, will the market react either way? I, I really don't know. It's a question of maybe how will um, our friend uh, Mr. Um, Powell speak about it? What will he say might be the uh, way that the um, the market reacts to the, to the comment. If he comes out hawkish saying, <clears throat> you know, we've raised it a uh, half a point, we're going to keep doing it until inflation goes down. That that is strong. If it's a quarter point rate and he goes, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to be strong when we need to be and we're going to ease off when we can. And we'll kind of go. That's a wishy washy. I, I don't want to hear that. Um, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, Mandu number five. Thank you for being a Gold Bagel member. Five months now. Get those thumbs up. Uh, saying they're saying thank you so much, my friend, for that. Um, appreciate you being here as always. Um, Thank you guys uh, so much for uh, for uh, following us today, hanging around with us. I hope you're going to make some uh, really good money here as things uh, continue to evolve. We have a lot to follow this week, including earnings from Apple Thursday after hours. Uh, we are uh, holding a 37-point gain at the, on the Dow and oil off 35 cents at 77.55. All right, that's where we're at. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, what's going on here? Here we go. Uh, Mandu says the power of the neat emojis. Maria Powell, neat, neat, neat. Uh, Splair, there's nothing better than the smell of some neat in the morning. Uh, deep value so far is now 45% this month. DQ already looking to pull back those 180 Modernas into 2024 Uncle B. Yeah, keep an eye. Uh, take your time. Uh, but yes, um, there will come a point where you'll be able to do it. What I'm hoping you can do, my friend, on those Modernas is not only pull back to 2024, 
but bring in more money. Uh, that that's the key. What, whatever you have to pay to buy back your calls, I want you to sell the next calls for more cash. So let's just see what this gives us. Uh, no rush here. Might have to wait a little more for a drop though. Yeah, we're, we're patient, my friend. We're crossing our arms on this one. You will be paid handsomely for this, for this move. You will be paid handsomely. And so now we just, we just let it occur uh, and see what, uh, you know, Let's see what it's all about. Uh, fun times, isn't it? Um, interesting stuff. Okay, yeah, Moderna right now is sitting at uh, 174 down six bucks. Uh, 164, 160 range. That might be the magic number. We'll see. Uh, you know, yeah. They go down a lot faster than they go up, don't they? Don't they just? It's amazing. Uh, Bobby, looks like it's dead catting out there. Splayer, only in Germany, your Wi-Fi connection gets lost during the same time at least three times a week. Splayer, when, where, where is our friend Mr. P again talking? When is our Mr. When is our friend Mr. P talking again? Uh, let's see. Dow up 8.4 cents right now. 8.4 uh, points. GameStop, hanging around 21.66 41 cents um the sofa hanging around 660 a share right now um 662 down seven okay that's where we're at there all right 13 point gain on the dow i think these marks are just trying to find a direction we had a down day yesterday is there a need for another down day today if so is it going to be dramatic slight the concern about the fed is going to grow and build uh what about that um and then earnings coming out uh, and, and any other announcements uh, from corporations. Let's see what happens here. Um, so Chicago PMI falls to 44.3 in January from a revised 45.1 in the prior month. Slowdown. We've seen evidence of slowdown everywhere, haven't we? And we're getting it here as well. Um, and... Um, Mr. Powell speaks, by the way, tomorrow, um, by the way, Splair, it's tomorrow afternoon uh, um, around, what is it, uh, two, in the, two in the afternoon Eastern time, something like that is when he speaks. Uh, uh, Splair, I was meeting the Rugman Powell this Thursday or Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. He speaks Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. And we'll wait for that, my friend. That's tomorrow. Um, tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, primetime live with your buddy Uncle Bruce. Come and join us. And... Uh, and uh, Gold Bagel members, that show is just for you. So become a Gold Bagel member immediately. Upgrade your uh, your membership immediately. And uh, join me tomorrow night at eight o'clock prime time immediately. And we'll have a we'll have a good time. Thank you. Did I mention immediately? Uh, we're at twenty one sixty seven on GameStop, up forty two. ATIP up two point six cents, forty four cents. Go Tesla just jumped up two forty one. Uh, 169.08. Giddy up. We hit 171 already here. Nice. Nice. Okay. Don't mind that a bit. Um, I have a viewer here who may or may not be watching me live right now, but he's got some Tesla shares. And uh, I would love to see him write some Tesla contracts. Uh, maybe 180s for a couple of months out might be a good idea. Um, you know who you are. And uh, I'm thinking of you today. Um, dollars can be brought in. Uh, that has to be looked into. Uh, where are we at now? 169 on Tesla. We're SoFi 657 off 11. The lower SoFi goes. Any of you who missed it, who missed the boat on SoFi, you get in there, and pick up that stock. Start picking it up. Um, Wing Commander, 8 p.m. German time is when Powell speaks tomorrow. Okay, thank you, my friend, for that info. Apple 142.99 down one penny. Okay, that would be 8 p.m. Central European time. Says Splair. Giddy. All right. Um, I did enjoy being in in uh, in Europe this year doing these shows with you folks because um, my uh, my uh, early show this one here uh, starting at 8:30 uh, uh, Eastern time uh, or whatever time it was I start here um, uh, is uh, is uh, a fourth uh, is a four thirty in the afternoon? No, no, two thirty in the afternoon. Uh, it's at two thirty in the afternoon. Very convenient. Uh, really easy to take. 
And then the evening show is 9 till 10. I love that. That was out of Switzerland. 9 till 10 o'clock is my evening show. Uh, boy, that made that was an easy schedule to keep. Uh, gave me gave me all morning and um, and a good chunk of the afternoon to to enjoy uh, the area and uh, and then take care of you guys uh, in the evenings. Man, that was that was easy. This getting up at three thirty in the morning here in Palm Desert is hard work. I can imagine uh, being in in my, in Hawaii it would be nightmarish. Uh, I don't know what I do in in Hawaii. Uh, uh, I'd have to get up. Well, I have to I have to start working at eleven at night, um, and I'd go on the air at the, I don't know two in the was it is it two in the morning over there? What time is it in Hawaii right now? I don't even know. Is anyone watching from Hawaii? I mean, if you are, God bless you. Uh, what time is it where you are in Hawaii? It's got to be early, um, man. Uh, that, that would be tough for me. And then, of course, in in uh, Sydney, Australia, how, what time would I have to do this show in Sydney, Australia? That, that would be uh, really early for me, wouldn't it? That would be like, or maybe that would be like in the evening it would start. Yeah, I guess it, my first show would be in the evening and the second show would be something in the morning. Uh, Christina, 171, thank you very much. Uh, Credit Savage, it's 4 a.m. in Hawaii. Oh, my God, 4 a.m. Uh, 4.56 um, is it, it's jarring. Uh, minus six hours, so 3.58 is Christina. So it's 3.58 in the morning in Hawaii right now. I'd have to start the show at... Uh, at three o'clock or two thirty in the morning, something like that. Oh my god! Uh, wow, um, Alex, it's three p.m. here in the UK, Bruce. I listen to the evening show as I think of it, eight to nine. By the way, lurking, but in the office today, and uh, that's UK. Alex is in the UK, and in 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 Amsterdam or in Switzerland or Germany, an hour later, and so it's nine till ten uh, for the late show. Yeah. Jeff, it's five hours. I made I made that same mistake. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, five hours differential or whatever it is, uh, or Christina, six hours minus six hours. Oh my gosh, uh, three thirty getting up at three thirty here means I'd have to get. I theoretically I would get up. I just wouldn't go to bed. Um, I, I'd have late nights uh, and um, crazy days in Hawaii. I don't know. If the, I don't know how I'd adapt to that. That that's tough. That's really tough. The late show wouldn't be so bad. That one would be um, what? Uh, that would be what six in the morning or something. Still, oh gosh, I, I all through the night I'd be awake when everyone else is sleeping. That would be oh boy, then I'd be sleeping when everyone's awake. That's not a good thing. Uh, yeah. Oh goodness. All right, uh, we're up three point seven on the Dow. By the way, uh, we're really uh, jumping around here. No direction home. Uh, three twenty one on six zero down four. GameStop up forty at twenty one sixty five. ATIP 44 cents up 2.6. Tesla up once up to 168 up 146. SoFi down 11 cents. Apple down 16 cents. HBQ down nine. Google down is up 55. Moderna down 589 to 174.98 on Moderna. Uh, giddy up, giddy up. Um, Cisco unchanged. Uh, Pfizer down just four cents. Pfizer has recovered. Uh, IBM down 78. Uh, Microsoft up 130. ME uh, uh, down three, up three and a half. Rocket Lab up five, uh, half a penny, pardon me. Matterport up three. Smart Rent up 3.8. Spires up three cents. Amazon up 187. Home Depot up three bucks, 19 cents. Netflix down 233. Vanek down 75 cents. Adobe up 299. Goldman down is up 30. Boeing is up 32. They're off on their highs. Meta uh, holding a 140 gain, but it's backed off a bit. Um, Royal Caribbean up 62 cents now. And uh, there you go. So it's mixed. And uh, the Dow at the moment down three points, up 20. I mean, we're just jumping around here. We're up seven on S&P. We're up 45 on NASDAQ. Oil up 11 cents as we speak. Okay. Congratulations on that. All right, let's see. Um, mm, 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 mm. Oh, uh, Credit Savage. No, oh, no daylight savings time, Hawaii. It's 5 a.m. Oh, boy. Uh, Goyote, that's the night shift. Laughing out loud. Christina, I love that. I lived there for three years. Uh, yes, it was so weird. When I wake up, everyone else is almost done with their day. Uh, Christina uh, lived there. Maria, uh, curious, what is the main source of income for ME other than kits? Do they sell the information from testing kits to third parties? Um, I know that they have a deal with uh, AstraZeneca, I think it's called, one of the big drug outfits. 
they have a deal with those guys where they are um um oh they're giving them access to their library of dna so that they can do further research on drug creation and the the folks at 23 and me are getting paid a million a week about 50 million a year in in a in a fee for this service but they're also earning royalties uh, they've got royalty contracts built into new drug creation and so if astrazeneca gets a drug through the uh, through the system and into the outside world then uh, then uh, uh, 23 and me will earn a royalty on that new drug and there are dozens in the pipeline dozens this is why the me story has not broken yet um the stock is where it is because the world at large doesn't understand the potential of this company they don't get it give uh give the company one drug through astrazeneca or anybody else just one that they have a royalty on changes everything because all of a sudden it makes me uh the minefield for every drug company out there to work with and it could mean me might have agreements royalty agreements with dozens of pharmaceutical companies dozens every day kits come in and in and in all the time and this library is expanding for me it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger it's the world's largest dna center now for info it's only a matter of time it's only a matter of time and at any moment i don't know what day what week what month but whenever it happens we might be asleep and the next morning first thing there's a press release from astrazeneca about a drug that's been approved by the fda or has passed the first test the second test the third test, whatever it is and the connection is made with me that all of a sudden the street goes oh my god these guys this me stock this 23me has a percentage of the upside of this drug which has just passed all these hurdles they're on their way to becoming fully released to the world uh, and this drug could sell billions of uh, dollars a year for years and years to the to the world at large me gets their slice they have no expenses to make the drug they don't they don't have to pay to make it they have to pay to distribute it they have to pay to promote it they get this royalty forever huge uh that would change the entire perception of the corporation and the street would just go whoa wait a minute i didn't know that of course they don't know it of course they don't know um and that's where all hell will break loose on the stock uh, maria Oh, thank you. Wow, someone needs to preach the side of the potential income stream. As I say, it's, I mean, as I, I've been a broken record about these guys. I haven't talked about them much lately, but um, this stock is 243 a share. <laughs> it's just, just, why did Richard Branson put in 20 million of his own personal money into this? And why did the insiders of this company put personal money into this company? Why do, why are, uh, why is there Google money in here? Why is there other smart money in here? And no one's complaining. No one is bitching about it. They've they've just we got our stock. They're they're doing they're doing this. This is the position they've taken. This is this is Richard Branson on ME. He folded his arms and he's just letting nature take its course cuz he knows. He knows. One little press release, a paragraph long, this stock trades 200 million shares a day for two weeks in a row and it's gone it's gone have you ever seen a pharmaceutical stock take off before the rocket is on the pad just gotta light the fuse and uh, i can't tell you when the launch is i can't i can't i can tell you it's two two forty three now that i can tell you is it a bargoon yes can it go way higher yes I can't tell you what. Uncle Bruce, your hours of work are one of the important contributors to quality of life. You have lived many locations. Choose the places that suit you best. Thank you so much, Hector. I appreciate it. Bobby, ME needs a name change. Um, I feel they are stuck in a gimmick land with the kits. Th this uh, this won't be a problem, Bobby. Th this They really don't want to change their name. What I think they should just leave it right the way it is. Just leave it. 
catch the street completely unaware is my attitude on this. Because if you change your name now, you've got to re-educate everybody on who the hell you are. Leave this the way it is and um, uh, let uh, the third party, the AstraZeneca or any other pharmaceutical they have deals with, let one of those guys be the source of the news that transforms this company forever. You can't get more legit than that. You just can't get more legit than that. Uh, JR, David, our um, uh, SEC is going broke. You have not listened to the budget experts who have been telling us for years, us damn boomers. Uh, so Social Security is going broke. Oh, okay. Uh, Thomas Social Security. Um, Splitter. But Branson has more possibilities for mistakes. He recovers faster than we do, especially when he writes options as well. Like I say, um, he hasn't sold this stock. He's not getting rid of it. Uh, um, none of the insiders are bailing. Um, no, I, I think we've got... Um, when the time comes and it happens, this stock, you're going to go, I had all those months. I had all those months I could have bought this stuff. I, I always had a couple hundred bucks for this and that and this. I could have bought these. I never did it. I never did it. I never did it. He kept talking about it. He kept talking about it. I never listened to him about it. I just ignored it. Hey, I get it. Uh, you, we have needs, wants, desires, uh, priorities. Uh, I get it. We don't have enough dough for everything. I, I get it. I get it. And some of you are thinking, well, I'll buy it when it takes off. Yeah, except that, um, you know, gets halted for half the day and opens at $12 bid, you know, game over, uh, you know. But, hey, those of you who have it, sit tight and enjoy the ride. There will be a ride. Sooner or later, it'll start. They'll, we'll start the ride soon. Oh, so much fun. I'm buying ME today, says Maria. Uh, JR, uh, Stephen Jackson, one of the reasons there are crickets is because of us members blocking and silencing certain shills for Ever. Bobby, I believe the CEO is an ex-Google upper manager. Christina, will AJ be bringing you a bagel today? I have no, I have no idea. I, uh, I'm, uh, I am not, uh, I have not been appraised and informed of, um, of uh, Auntie Jen's whereabouts and timing and schedule. All I know is uh, Jen has physio today. That I know, and I got to get her there, and I got to get her back. Uh, but we do that every week without any issues. So I'm here and you're here and we're watching this market up 18 points on the Dow and we'll find out together what's going to happen. Either way, I'm okay with it. We're up 25 cents on GameStop, 21.50, ATIP 43.8, up 2.4. Tesla 168.23, up 157. SoFi 660 again, down 8 cents. Not backing off very much, is it? Not really. Uh, volume on SoFi here, 13 million. And it's not giving up the ghost. It's not down 50 cents today. It's not down 80 cents today. It's down eight. Interesting. Uh, Apple uh, down 41. HPQ down 15. Google up 46. Moderna down 657 to 174.30. Uh, Cisco down 11. Pfizer down 22 again, uh, 43.33. Now down 19 cents to 43.36. IBM is off 88 cents. Microsoft down 103. There you go. Sean and Wendy, um, 176 on your thumbs up meter, by the way, Bruce, you're 24 away from 200. Good morning, all. And thank you for all of these emojis. Uh, thank you, guys. Splayer, I probably add 100 uh, ME Spire and Rock Lab in total. The others will have more units of stonks because I like them more or because they're cheap. You know, ATIP, yes, cheap, definitely. Um, Thank you all for uh, for popping through here. Um, what do we got here? Uh, again, um, Amandu, member for 22 months. Thank you again for your uh, bold uh, green bar. Appreciate that. Letting the world know how long you've been here, along with our friend uh, Lordo Flaws. Thank you guys for uh, letting everybody know how long you've been here as members. It's really appreciated. Um, you know, the only thing I can say is that um, it is one of those it's it's time for a knee emoji attack i think this market is kind of quiet i think we need our stocks to go the direction we want them to go uh i think these knee emojis are going to help me go higher and help uh a atip go higher and help uh, me go higher and maybe these knee emojis will will uh allow your options to come in to where you want them to come in so you can roll and write and 
reacquire. Um, Moon Man Moo is in the house and popping them up. Splayer is in the house, popping them up there. Maria here. Here's Maria Powell with the knee emojis. Get out of Maria's way. Don't get in Maria's way. You'll get run over with the knee emoji attack. Karen's here. Karen D is right here. KD is on it. Uh, Maria's got some more going. Uh, Splayer's got some going. And dollar signs as well. You got to love that. Uh, knee emojis filled with dollar signs. Thank you very much. Congratulations, everybody, on being able to use your knee emojis as channel members of this channel. DQ is here. Uh, Karim is here. Uh, fantastic. SoFi is about to go green. It's working. Uh, see, we're only down a penny on SoFi. Let's get those knee emojis out there. Marcus is in there putting those knee emojis up there. Watch that SoFi go. Here we go, baby. Oh, yeah. You can't stop with the knee emojis. The knee emojis. You can't resist the power of knee emojis. Knee, 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 knee around the world. The sound of the knee emojis. Deep value emoji, Deep value investing is here. The sound of these knee emojis will take the markets to where we want them to go. Hope you're having fun today, everybody. Sean and Wendy, God's amazing. Neat, 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 neat. Right on, kids. Marcus, I'm 179, Bruce. Uh, you're going to get 200 thumbs ups today, no matter what. Here comes some curling rocks from Maria. Look out. Get out of the way. You'll get run over. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Go, baby, go. 667 on the SoFi, down one penny. Oh, yeah. You're going to love that. Giddy up, kids. Uh, Bama Babe is here with the emojis. Uh, you know it's serious when Bama Babes are on. Yeah, get out of Bama Babe's way. This is good stuff. Um, you, Uncle Bruce, JR, uh, a small personal rant of my own. If anyone dares to claim that the U.S. is not a socialism state, they had better reread the preamble to our own constitution. There you go. Spoken like a true teacher. Uh, don't mess with the prof here. All right. Fantastic, everybody. Um, if you can't go back to high school where they discuss this, now you have the internet. Go study, people. Go study. <laughs> right on. SoFi, 666. Let's go, SoFi. Let's go higher. Let's go to $7 today, $7.50 today. Let's go. Let's go. $8 tomorrow. Let's go. Let's go. Zeta State. The emojis, Bruce. They're coming in. Look at the SoFi. We're green. We're green on SoFi. Neat, 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 neat. Guyote spoken like a teacher were my exact thoughts. Neat, 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 neat. SoFi's green. Neat, 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 neat. The attack is working. It's having its effect. 669 a share on SoFi. It's out of control. Neat, neat, neat. <laughs> is anyone talking about the uh, Google earnings coming out tomorrow and expectations? Mm, not here. Uh, I haven't been doing that yet. I have no idea what to expect. Um, we'll probably hear about that tonight. JR, neat, 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 neat. <laughs> There's no stopping the knee emoji attack. It is happening. Uh, 669 on SoFi. We're going higher. The machine, 007, is even here. Look at that. They're all waking up from their slumber. Hector is here. Hector Salamanca, welcome. BW as well. It's bagel time for Bruce. Uh, neat, 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 neat. Here we go. Uh, we're running. We're running. Let's get this market running. Uh, even Apple is green, up 10 cents. Look at that. The whole market's turning green right now. HPQ only down 6 cents. It's coming back. Giddy up, babies. So uh, Cisco's gr green. Pfizer only down 3 cents. Oh, we're going green all over the place. The knee emojis have had their effect all over the place. Giddy up, everybody. Welcome to the party, pals. Welcome to the party. Great to have you around. <laughs> mm, JR saying, I don't see any other colored names here besides uh, gray for nons and green for members. We're all greenies. Go SoFi. Dump. Deep value investing. More knee emojis coming in right there. Giddy up. Time to run this market. Let's go. Yeah. Make it do what we want it to do. Oil up. Uh, oil is, is up 41 cents. Dow's up 42 points, so oil a little better now instead of being negative. It's 78.31, though. Not much happening. Interesting. Mm. Coffee. Oh, coffee so good. Uh, welcome to the Option Dome, says Hawkeye. <laughs> That's right. The Option Dome. Right on, kids. Oh my, I don't know. I uh, I was thinking about, I think about this all the time about SoFi, you know, reach a certain level, $12, $15 a share. There will be a point where there could well be thousands of SoFi options being written 
daily by this channel. Thousands every day being written by this channel. Bought back lower, rewritten, rolled over. Thousands. We're bringing in probably millions of dollars of premium money uh, into just this channel's viewers. Uh, the SoFi potential for the, the for this the viewers of this channel, the SoFi potential is so unbelievable. Um, sure, the stock can let's have it go go back to where we once were. That that's a given. That we're pretty sure it will happen sooner or later. Fine, fine, fine. But the ability to write options on stock that you guys have been buying at fours and fives and six and seven dollars a piece bringing your averages way, way down here, and now writing calls that bring a buck and a half, two bucks in, in gross premiums, where you're trying to net out like a buck a month, a quarter a week. If you can only bring in 25 cents a week in net, net profits, writing options on SoFi, think about that. 25 cents a week, dollar a month on all the shares you have. How many of you could live just off your SoFi alone? Whatever you make on GameStop, Whatever you do on Tesla, whatever you do on Apple, whatever you do on Cisco, Pfizer, that's all gravy. That's all separate. Just SoFi premiums, buck a month. What kind of lifestyle would you guys have? It would be phenomenal. I am certain of it. And I think about it all the time when I'm off the air. I kind of go, wow, the SoFi that we're sitting on here. The ATIP would be great. Uh, by all means, ATIP, take a run to the stratosphere. But the uh, SoFi shares, with this company now turning this this corner of profitability, oh my gosh. Um, the analysts that I quoted this morning, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, that's, that's a nothing burger. Uh, we are going to hear stuff. Mm, it's going to be something. JR, interesting aside, I had to learn all of that stuff myself as I hated history in school. Now uh, that I listen to Uncle Bruce, it's all falling into place now. Credit Savage, it's going to be hilarious in 2030 when we tell people we were buying SoFi at four bucks. Uh, they're going to call us big time liars. I'm not going to believe it. Carvana was, I think, reaching seven and a half. Then boom, we're suddenly at 11. Shortly, is it possible on SoFi as well in the future? Or is this more of a story for stocks that dropped from 400 to 380? No, it's an, in, entirely possible. Uh, uh, SoFi could at any time run to eight, nine bucks a share without any fanfare. Uh, uh, analysts, some analyst releases come out on SoFi and, and we're through 10 bucks a share. It's, it's, when the, it's when the street really realizes the utter profitability that SoFi brings to the table. This one stat that I gave you about deposits on hand that used to be a billion dollars are now seven billion dollars in a year. That was the first year for SoFi as a chartered bank. That, that was only the first year. That's the slowest year they're ever going to have. That is the smallest year they're ever going to have to bring in deposit money. From now on, deposit money will be coming in at a faster accelerated rate in larger amounts. So to go from $7 billion now to 20 or $25 billion in a year, is entirely possible and they're writing loans on that think think about that and higher interest rates uh rates go up from the fed that means savings rates go up but that means loan rates go up and that means income goes up on sofi on higher de uh, deposits <laughs> being lent out to qualified borrowers this is a huge wheel that is about to accelerate here at a speed that has not been contemplated. There were analysts two years ago talking about SoFi's potential, not thinking that they would be talking about seven to 25 billion in deposits with assets being written on that kind of level at these higher rates. They weren't thinking of that. They were thinking the low interest rate environment two years ago. It was zero interest rates two years ago. They were wondering how can SoFi make any money if the interest rates are 3 4%, the inflation will take out their dough. This is the difference. SoFi is growing at such an exponential rate now with new members coming in and in and in and deposits growing and growing and loans growing and growing. With all the services they offer, this is an unstoppable force. We're talking about 
kind of an apple here. We're talking like an apple, um, the apple of fintech banking. Uh, they like to call themselves, or others have called themselves, the Amazon of, of online banking. I kind of go and look at it, go, yeah, you, you, with all the products you have, you're way more diversified than just a one. You're not a one trick pony. It's, it's, that's not it. These guys have got all these other divisions that are bringing them dough. Um, this stock is going to become a huge winner without any doubt. There are 229 of you that are hearing me talk about it. Not 22,900 of you hearing me talk about it. 20, 220 of you are here. And we're sharing this information back and forth. This, this We are, you know, the 0.01% of the market. The street is not aware of just what this thing is going to do. Uh, JR Gasp, uh, the market is like cats in a room full of rocking chairs and running everywhere. Drew, I know we're not supposed to write SoFi calls, but say we did. Thoughts on rolling out March 5s to July 5s for $37? No, no, no. Um, uh, July 6th, no. Uh, then I can't wait for that glorious day because I want to write there something. Because Credit Savage SoFi is killing earnings from every metric in a bear market. They can become profitable in a bear market. They are saving money and making profits in a bear market. And Galileo and Technicis, wow. Yes, Maria. There is an ATIP near my place in uh, Saluda, South Carolina. I plan to stop by next week while I'm there. You can sometimes learn a lot from a location, appearances, and speaking to employees. I agree, uh, Maria. I'd love to hear what they have to say. Would love to hear the street view over there. That would be great, uh, by all means. So far, 671, up three cents. You're welcome, market. Uh, you're welcome, um, people listening to me and buying the stock. Splare, thanks for all that good words on SoFi. The way until here was already long. A deep value, the credit savage, well said. Giddy up, kids. Yeah, in a bear market, that's what these guys are doing. When everyone else is, is laying off people, when companies are cutting back employees, SoFi is expanding out, getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Huge. It's It's got a uh, huge upside. Uh, a $50 stock, yeah, a couple of years from now, could be a $50 stock. And you will be talking about writing 55s for six months out for a $7 premium. And you're going to go, I paid less than that for this stuff. And I'm writing $7 calls. Wow. And I'm writing 100 of them at a time. Whoa, $700 calls times 100 calls. 70 grand in how much you give them back not 70 grand less than that cool bean stuff um yeah really something uh you got it maria says I, i'll be there uh, i put my savings in sofi because of their apy is so much higher than what my credit union offers there you go adam there's about four atip locations by me in michigan by the way uh, credit savage sofi owns them uh has a contract with uh pegaya too um this is credit savage. Um, uh, Epiphany so far is going to kill the banking business because they can lend out the big bucks to the big boys at a lower interest rate. I see big business flocking to them. Yeah, uh, they are. They're. They've scratched the surface. I mean, this this nothing has been hit yet in any big way. This is. We are talking. We're talking Steve Jobs and and uh, we're talking. Uh, Steve Jobs and his buddy in the garage of his parents' house. That's what we're talking about here. Maybe a little further down that road, but that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with, we're dealing with Apple early days for SoFi. The company is kind of known. People know the name, but they don't know what they do. And Apple was a name people knew, but they really didn't know what they did until 1984 when that commercial came out on the Super Bowl. Uh, Apple broke out, and with the Macintosh and with all the stuff, but remember, Apple didn't make it until G Steve Jobs got dumped and was brought back to save the company. SoFi has gone through all the gyrations as a private concern, and they did their banking thing. We, we suffered through that for a year here. For a year we waited for that damn banking charter to come in, and we survived that. And here we are on the other side of it, getting ready to take off. And the street is... Believes it or not, uh, doesn't matter. You don't have to believe it. This thing's going to go. 16.6 .6 million today is a volume. It's good. It's a good volume so far. But uh, 
the price of this stock is uh, not going to stay here much longer. I don't think there's much left, but that's me. Waz, Wozniak, thank you. Yeah, the Waz. That's right. Steve and the Waz in the garage. Yep. A Z. Um, and if SoFi has options that meet the 90 10, one could double the position with leaps. Uh, but uh, right now, you just buy the stock. Um, Deuce Caboose, that damn banking charter couldn't have said it better. Laugh out loud. Jobs was a visionary. Think of how many industries he has had a direct hand in completely changing PCs, phones, music, movies, everything. Exactly. BW, the great and powerful was. Uh, Flint Creek, I wish the heck SoFi would allow covered call trading. They will. Their, their brokerage entity is under development. It's coming. It's only a matter of time. Again, we're talking garage. We're, we're talking early days. Yeah. Uh, when they do that, there will be millions of more people opening in accounts with SoFi. Millions of option traders will jump in there and start trading options through SoFi system. You think the stock's going to stay at 668 a share? I don't think so. They're going to buy their stock themselves. Watch out. BP, uh, what is the difference between what SoFi provides and other online banks like Chase? Well, Chase has physical locations. They can't make the profitability that uh, SoFi can make. SoFi will attract deposits as they are. They will lend them out and make way more money per million under admin. Chase needs billions to match it. Uh, that's the difference. They will outgrow Chase. They will out PE multiple Chase, uh, and their stock will outdo Chase's stock. That's the bottom line. I mean, that's it. Flynn, I know I have no patience. I have no patience. I have no patience. I have no patience. Yeah. Cross your arms. Get ready. Pick up the stock. Get ready. Steal it. The people who are selling here are losers. They're going to be losers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but boy. Yeah, um, Splair, what I hate about waiting for years are the last days before it happens. Then the time runs always slowly when you know the date. And when, But when you can fold arms, forget time, it's easy. Uh, JR, actually, wasn't his name Steve, wasn't he? I guess it was. I think he was a Steve. Yeah, he was a Steve. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Flint, uh, BP, get the app and we'll see. Um, DQ, uh, BP and SoFi offers 3.75% interest on savings accounts. That's right. They do. I think they offer 2.5% on checking accounts. I think it's 2.5% on checking accounts. It's a really good deal. Um, and uh, Flint Creek, I if I offer a link to someone and they open an account, I get 50 bucks. How about that? You see? There you go. Uh, Dow Jones up 33 points. Giddy up. GameStop up 55 cents. 2180. That's where we're at right now. ATIP 42.3 up 0.9. Tesla up to 168.67, up two bucks. SoFi unchanged, 668, right there, right there, right there. We're right there, up four cents on Apple. Mm. Yep, DQ, two and a half percent on a checking account. They get, they pay two and a half percent. HBQ up two cents. Google up 72. Moderna still down 570 at 175. Cisco up eight cents. Pfizer up 13 cents. Pfizer's turned it around. IBM down 70 cents. Microsoft up 253. ME up two tenths of a penny at 243.5 at the moment. Rocket Lab up one penny. Matterport up six cents. Smart Rent up a nickel. Spire up two cents. Amazon up 255. Home Depot up 528. By the way, anybody who wants to have a one-on-one uh, -on -one this Sunday, heads up. Um, the 10 o'clock slot is gone. We have a noon and a 2 p.m. available this, this Sunday. Those are the only two left. Just to give you the heads up, okay? Whoops, yeah, Rick Wozniak is a guy I know. Um, JR, uh, DQ, laugh no loud. Uh, so much fun. Uh, yeah, it's Steve, Steve Wozniak, Steve. Um, I love how, uh, I love that movie, Multiplicity. And uh, the, the, the third copy of the character of Michael Keaton used to call Michael Keaton Steve. <laughs> hey, Steve. <laughs> I love that. So much fun. Amazon up 268. Rock and roll. Um, Vanek up 165. Adobe up $4. Goldman up 280. Boeing up 130. We got a green day, more or, le more or less, 74 point gain on the Dow. I uh, just like to see it translate elsewhere. Up 59 on on GameStop or gyrating, but we're at 2184 on GameStop now. 
And SoFi is hanging around here at uh, 668, 669. Uh, There you go. Uh, What can I say? Um, Fun, fun times. Looks like embattled House Republican George Santos steps down from committees. Um, He told House colleagues on Tuesday he will recuse himself from his committee assignments until his issues are sorted out. According to multiple published reports, um, uh, I think that uh, some people have an idea on what sorted out actually means, means a lot more than resigning from committee memberships, but, um, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, such crazy times, mm, such crazy times. NetApp to cut 8% of its workforce, we hear. Another headline going through. Up 63 on the Dow now. Uh, GameStop up 58 to 2183. Tesla's up two bucks now, 168.69. SoFi unchanged. Apple up 13 cents. There you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> there's no SoFi where I live, says BP. Um, Credit Savage, I went to the JP Morgan investor event last year, and Noto was one of the CEOs presenting. Uh, he talked about them wanting to have a very big footprint in the Midwest. They haven't even started there yet, so so much potential here. Vilbus, she touched my uh, my PP, Steve. She, thanks, Steve. Um, I, I, Deuce Caboose, Uncle Bruce. I wrote a Rocket Lab January 2024 call. I'm getting tired of it, uh, just sitting there, and I want to churn it some more. I'm up about 25. percent You recommend I buy it back and write at a closer a closer date? Well, uh, January 24. I mean, if you can write a closer date, if you want to do that, uh, you know, that'll bring you a lot closer to the action, maybe closer to the price, because uh, you're probably so far out in price and time, there's no interest with you. Um, Peppy, uh, JR, uh, Peppy, BP, BP, is there a SoFi Europe or a SoFi UK? No, SoFi does not provide service to residents of Europe, UK. Not yet. Uh, you know, Apple started as an American company and eventually went international. Zach, 196 on the thumbs-up meter. Uh, we're going to hit 200 here. The Credit Savage, George Santos was the fifth Beatle, you know. Uh, Zach, um, <laughs> old George Scamtos, uh, Credit Savage, George Santos invented penicillin, you know. Uh, Beach Boy, hey, Steve, uh, I'm Uncle Bruce, do you have a free slot for a one-on-one at noontime? Uh, yes, I do. 12 o'clock uh, Sunday is available, sir. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, you betcha. Um, Hector. George Santos invented George Santos. There you go. Uh, that guy does everything. It's amazing. Um, what, a, what a life. Um, <laughs> crazy times in which we live. 69-point uh, gain on the Dow right now, folks. Uh, we're coming to the end of this program today. Um, thank you all for joining me and being here today. Thank you for these thumbs-ups. Thank you for these uh your kind words and support uh and uh, letting me know how you're doing uh thank you for helping out with the uh, emoji knee attack uh and i'm gonna do i'm gonna go make homemade bagels have a good day everybody says christina there you go uh neat 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 is all i can say hopefully the shares will go in your direction as we move forward here 201 thumbs ups have come in all i can say to that is neat 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 thank you everybody for that uh, appreciate it very much. Larry Titus, Hector, thank you for the knee emojis. Thank you. Uh, Curtis Savage, ooh, I know this one. So far, we'll start growing and expanding with Mexico and Latin America soon, then Japan and Europe. Wait till that happens. That's when we go from 100 to 200 a share. JR, neat, 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 Mirko, neat, 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 neat. They're everywhere. Uh, knee emojis are popping up from all over the planet now, overrunning YouTube's analytical and, uh, and artificial intelligence computer systems. So wondering what the heck is going on with these knee emojis coming out of this channel this tiny puny little tiny channel with these deep followers who is this guy what are they doing over there what is going on with them john anderson thank you everybody dq thank you so much for the for the knee emojis zach thanks for the knee emojis popping them up there to help your fellow man how nice are we moon man moon number five thank you uh john gill is here uh they're coming in baby zach is here Neat, 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 neat. There they go. The emojis. Get out of the way of the knee emoji tech. 204 thumbs ups. Thank you, everybody. Uh, there's a there's a payment for a one-on-one. Ho, ho, 
Oh, I know who that is. Another one-on-one -on -one over there. Uh, we will get you set up for noon, my friend. Your That time slot is gone. We only have one slot left for Sunday afternoon, 2 o'clock Eastern time. If anyone wants it, just let me know. And we'd love to have you join us. And we will talk stock. We'll do some scheming, see what we can do here. Bobby, the day SoFi comes to Canada, I'll be joining instantly. SoFi Canada, wouldn't that be cool? SoFi Canada, there'd be like 2 million members out of there. Oh, man, Canadians love online banking. Low-cost online banking, if only we could find it. Fantastic. Neat, 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 neat. There's no stopping the emojis. Beach Boy, uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. You are booked in noon Sunday. No one can take your spot. Fantastic. There we are. It's done. And there we go. Thank you all for following me today. Guys, have a great morning. Um, good afternoon this afternoon. Deep value. Thank you for the knee emojis. Let's go. Uh, 668 on SoFi. Let's go. I'll see you at 3 o'clock Eastern today for our second show. And uh, we'll see how this market wants to end the day. It looks like it's up at the moment. We're 91 points higher on NASDAQ. 0.8 of a percentage point. It might be breakout time. We're up half a point on S&P and a 0.21 on the Dow. Maybe we get an update now because the NASDAQ is looking a lot better. D.A. Druda, thank you for the uh, knee emojis. Uh, see you later, Steve. Thanks, Steve. See you around, Steve. <laughs> uh, good stuff, everybody. Thank you for everything. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your morning. I will see you guys at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Let's get her going. Let's see if some money can be made today. And uh, let me know how you're doing on those option trades. Okay, everybody. Thank you all. Uh, we'll see you this after at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Be there or be square. Uh, BP, thank you, my friend. Uh, bye, Steve. Uh, Bama Babe, thank you. Uh, DH, thanks. Deep Value, thank you. And uh, and there we go. The, the emojis are underway. All right. Have a successful and relaxed day, you all. Thank you, Spark. See you later today. Bye, friend.